today, we're going to be talking about the Ministry of Helps, the secret of happiness, satisfaction, and also uh, uh, growth, spiritual growth. I have noticed that people who serve God grow spiritually, and people who don't serve God uh, become plateaued. They kind of they kind of stop growing, and you don't want that to happen. You want to keep growing in God. And because there's so much to receive and so so much more we can be and do as we continue to serve, when we give to God, he gives to us. So I'm going to pray for you. And, and today I want you to know that this is going to be a very helpful sermon. So please pay attention, make up your mind to receive. It's going to help you get unstuck and unlocked and start receiving further spiritual blessings. Father, raise your hands. Go ahead. You can do it unless you're flying an airplane. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for blessing everyone who's watching, listening, receiving, and achieving what you have for us today. And I pray that you'll allow me to stand in the office that you have called me unto and minister with the gifts and graces you placed in my life. And whatever endowment, whatever gifts operate here today, whatever happens, will give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Let me hear from the Z team. Go ahead and make a little bit, a bit of noise today. Let glory to God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. 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 Praise the Lord. I love the Z team. I, I call our Z team the amazing Z team, and I'm going to be using them as good examples here today. Uh, I'm going to brag on them, and they're probably going to uh, be embarrassed. I'm going to brag on them so unashamedly. But, you know, I'm a pastor of a wonderful church. It's an online church, but it's a real church, a spirit-filled, Bible-believing, word of faith church, and we function as a church. Now, we have a lot of people. You'd be surprised how many people are with us during the week and on Saturdays through Facebook and YouTube and Twitch, some of them live, and, and but most of them, you know, they listen to the broadcast later. Any way you get it is fine with us, but we encourage you to, to as much as possible, try to be with us live because uh, that's more spontaneous. That's when things are happening. And who knows, you may receive a word from the Lord, a word of prophecy, a word of wisdom, uh, something special from God. So anytime it's possible, try to be with us live. And if you can't be live, then uh, by all means, go back and, and look at the, uh, at the videos. This is going to be a great service. You may want to watch it twice. Uh, the Ministry of Helps. Revival is coming. I'm persuaded. You know, there's a lot of bad stuff going on in the world. Uh, you, you don't have to be a genius to figure that out. I mean, we have climate problems. We have war in uh, different parts of the world. The one in Ukraine and Russia is very bothersome, NATO. And then we have the sea levels rising. We have droughts. We have fires. We have mass shootings. And I'm sorry about talking about this, but there's a lot of bad stuff going on in the world. But I am not a prophet of doom and gloom. I read the back of the book, We Win. Amen. Uh, in the world, you'll have tribulation, but Jesus said, Amen. be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I am believing for a spiritual awakening. I'm believing for a revival. And I believe that part of the revival is going to be online. There are 2.9 billion people on the internet. That's a good place to reach souls for Jesus. And we at Z Church are preparing ourselves to capture this harvest that's coming in. And that's why we're involved in the ministry of helps and building our infrastructure and doing what we're doing so that as God gives us the increase, we can begin to bring these people in uh, to fellowship and a place where they can grow and learn and serve. Praise God for revival. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. 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 All right, here's our go-to text, 1 Corinthians 12, 28. There's a list of ministries in the church. There's eight of them here. God has set in the church first apostles. Uh, Pastor Dick is going to be with us next week as a bona fide apostle. Secondarily, prophets, yours truly. <laughs> Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles, gifts of healings, helps. Right here, along with apostles and prophets and teachers, is listed a ministry office called helps that's ordained by God. And people in the ministry of helps are serving the kingdom, just like the apostle and the prophet and the teacher and so forth, plus governments or administrations and diversity of tongues. Now, there's some other 
ministries in the church, like the ministry of giving, and we could name them all. But what I want you to focus on is that the ministry of helps is a real ministry. A lot of people don't know this. They recognize the pastor and, you know, uh, that's all they have is a pastor. They don't have a they don't have a ministry of helps or a ministry of hospitality or something. They just have their pastor and, and maybe it's a smaller church and he does everything. <laughs> well, that's okay. God bless pastors. They're, they are the father-like ones who take charge over the flock of God. So uh, uh, we love pastors. We love evangelists. We love teachers. We have a need of prophets. We have a need of apostles. But listen, we need the ministry of helps, and the ministry of helps is a bona fide ministry of God. God set in the church the ministry of helps. Now, I'm the co-founder and former vice president, associate pastor of Faith Christian Fellowship International, and uh, we were organized back in uh, 1978, <clears throat> and that was when the Charismatic revival was still in full swing, and the Word of Faith movement was really uh, blowing and going. God was doing amazing things. And our church grew very, very rapidly. And we were known for being a church that had a tremendous uh, ministry of helps. In fact, uh, we popularized the ministry of helps. We preached about it. We, we propagated it. We spread the Word. There were a lot of churches that didn't know anything about the ministry of helps or very little, but we kind of, we, we, we were used of God. In fact, we sent out ministry teams all across the country, uh, usually a couple of times a month, and we would take a team of people, and they were called, uh, I think we called them uh, Faith Life uh, uh, Seminars, uh, it's been a long time ago, but uh, we taught on the ministry of the pastor, what the role of the pastor is, the ministry of the associate pastor, the ministry of uh, helps, that was one of the things we taught on in some of the other ministries. And we taught on things like how to set up an audio video or, you know, an audio ministry, a cassette ministry, a, a book store ministry. And we, we taught churches how to do things. Now, not only did we go out and hold seminars, many of those seminars were uh, attended by pastors in their area. And then a couple of times a year, we would have conferences in Tulsa and hundreds of pastors would come out, and we always had workshops on the Ministry of Helps. Now, we had an amazing young man who worked for us. You may have heard his name, Reverend Buddy Bell. And Buddy Bell, uh, he has the Ministry of Helps. He, he's kind of like the uh, Moses of the Ministry of Helps. God has used that, uh, that fellow. He's, uh, he's uh, not a young man anymore, but young at heart. And he wrote a book that's a classic. It's called The Crowbar of God. And let me tell you something, he has been in thousands of churches teaching them about the ministry of helps and setting up their ministry of helps, organizing it, and training people. And he will go into a church that's barely functioning, pastors overwhelmed, too much work and not enough, uh, you know, too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Sorry about that analogy. But uh, after Buddy Bell would leave, the thing would be operating uh, like a Swiss watch just really, really good. Uh, I remember when, when God really started using Buddy Bell. We bought a building. Uh, our church bought a building, and it was a 50,000 square foot uh, department store, Dillard's department store, gone out of business. And we bought it and had all these partition walls and uh, uh, a lot of stuff that we didn't need. We needed a big auditorium. We needed classrooms and so forth. And we gave up the lease that we had been in, we had a leasehold, and uh, we had 10 days, 10 days to remodel a 50,000 square foot building. 10 days, we did it with volunteer help. And Buddy Bell was in charge. He had shifts, three shifts a day, operating 24 hours a day. Hundreds of people, these are our church people, come in, came in there tearing out partition walls, rewiring everything, uh, putting drop ceilings in, uh, taking the tile off the floor, the linoleum tile. I, I just can't tell you how much work there was, building frame walls, uh, drywall, floating and taping and painting and trim and hanging doors and, and you know light fixtures. And we finished the job in 10 days. 10 days after we started, 
we had a seminar, a big, a big conference in that building. <laughs> and we had a 10,000 square foot sanctuary, all carpeted, the, the uh, platform built, the sound booth, the sound, everything. This was amazing. And people had so much fun. They, they cranked up gospel music, not, not, not your, your uh, kumbaya music. I mean, this was, this was pumping, uh, you know, gospel music, and people were shouting, and they had wheelbarrows, and they didn't walk with wheelbarrows. They ran with them. And we had people pulling up the tile in the floor, and they had these things that looked like a garden hole, only they were flat instead of at a right angle. And, and there was a technique somebody figured it out where they could stick this this uh, this kind of wedge like thing on a handle under a row of tiles and start running just like you're plowing and these tiles would start to just pop off the floor they're hard to get up and there would be several rows of people running and these tiles are going pop 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 and then somebody behind them three or four people with big push brooms and they're pushing all the tiles into a big pile. And then people there with grain shovels, shoveling it into the wheelbarrows, people grabbing wheelbarrows. This is like an empty pit stop. And they were running out and they would run up a ramp and flip the, the, uh, the what am I talking about? The, uh, the wheelbarrow. wheelbarrow, the wheelbarrow and dump everything. And then they would bring it out. And I mean, coming and going, this lasted 24 hours a day. Let, let me tell you what happened. There were people who were doing things they never knew how to do. Uh, there were people who were painting, who had never painted before. I'm talking about professional painting. Uh, and there were people who hadn't done any wiring before and plumbing, but they, they did it. They said, well, you know, it's for God. Well, the Holy Ghost will show us. There were people that didn't know how to do framing carpentry, carpentry but they're learned. There were people who didn't know how to hang drywall or how to tape and float and put down trim and hang doors. Let me tell you something. I, many of our people, this is the honest to God truth, went into business for themselves after that event. There were people that Easy, started man, drywall man. companies, painting Whoa, companies. Crazy. One friend of mine started a construction company. It was called Kingdom Builders, uh, uh, Pastor Mike Galata. And uh, he put himself and five families in business. And that he didn't know anything. He did not know how to drive a nail or read a blueprint book. But when he got through with that, that event, he said, you know, I can do this. There was so much energy. There was so much fun. I mean, this was like, a, 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 I don't know, a, a contest. Uh, we weren't competitive. We were racing against the clock because we needed to get our building done. But it was so energizing. And I watched what happened to people. The people who worked the people who came out and gave themselves to God, you never heard a complaint out of them. They never criticized the church. They became our best givers. They became the most faithful people. You know why? Because if you work in the church, then you want to protect your investment. It's the people who Amen. just sit around, the looky-loos who watch. I've found they're the ones who complain the most. They don't participate. They're not part of the answer. They're not part of the solution. And they like to sit around as armchair quarterback saying, well, you should have done it this way. You should have done it that way. I say, listen, why, why don't you just roll up your sleeves and come down here and join us? Praise God. If, you're, hey, if you know how to do it better, show us. And, and we're going to welcome you to be Amen. part of the team. Thank God for the ministry of helps. The church operates Amen. by the ministry of helps. There wouldn't be a church without the ministry of helps, not a real functioning church. We are members of the body of Christ. And I'm going to say this several times today. The ministry of helps is a real ministry, and it has a real anointing on it, and it has a real blessing in it. Praise God. Praise God. Now then, uh, I want to I want to talk about this for for a moment. Uh, well, I'll talk about myself for a moment. I I've always been involved in ministry of helps. You've heard my testimony probably, but uh, no one ever had to ask me to do something. I looked around, whatever I saw to do, I did it, and um, I loved doing it. Uh, nobody had to tell me what to do. Uh, I'm like the ant, you know, the person who, who the Bible says. Uh, go to the answer, slugger, sluggard, and uh, watch them and be wise because 
without an overseer, they know how to they know how to work in every season to prepare for harvest. That's my paraphrase. But you know, the ant doesn't need an overseer. It's built into them. They know what to do, and they have a division of labor. And everyone, every one of these little ants does its part. And I believe God is saying, uh, be a self motivator. Don't wait for someone to just single you out. Uh, jump in and be a part of the team. There are so many folks that are just waiting for an engraved invitation before they do anything. Come on, get unstuck from that. <laughs> and, and and just humble yourself and do whatever your hand finds to do. And you Great say, well, stuff. you know, I've got a degree. You know, I've, I've got a master's degree. I've got a doctor's degree. Well, I tell you what, you need to get your hands dirty sometime. Remember Jesus, he washed his disciples' feet. And, and they wanted to push back on that and say, oh, no, no, don't you wash our feet. But he was the servant king. And he said, you've watched how I've washed your feet. You need to wash one another's feet. Uh, Pastor Loretta and I Amen. were supernaturally led to a, a city in central Mexico to, to hold, not just hold crusades, but to bring in a move of God. And we did. It's uh, like a book of Acts. It was wonderful. And uh, we started with a handful of churches, about 30 churches, all of them very small. And uh, we put together a big crusade. Of course, Pastor Loretta and I raised all the money, did all the organizing. And, uh, and it, was, it was a big success, tremendous success. Uh, people got born again, and, and we fed people into the churches, and we had miracles and signs, and we showed them how to do things, and we helped them organize. Uh, one church had about 100 people when we first met them. And a few years later, they're breaking uh, the 1500 member mark. And I, I promise you, that's because of what God did through those meetings and through our ministry there. And it wasn't just that church. There were many, many churches that doubled and tripled and increased in size. Many, many times things started happening. And uh, as they grew, they kind of outgrew us. We put on these meetings that just, uh, they got bigger and bigger every year. And we started attracting more and more people, started attracting governors from the state, mayors from the city, even the president um, came to one of the meetings. But when the meetings got bigger, uh, they kind of forgot about us. I remember in the early days that I got a group of about 30 pastors together, and we we're just starting to introduce ourselves to everyone. And you know, people have this question, what are these gringos doing here? And I gathered some people, all the pastors, and I had them stand on the platform on the stage. And it was about, oh, two and a half feet high. And I said, make a single line here. And I said, I want you to put your toes right on the edge of the platform. Would you do that? Just hang them over just a little bit. And I had one of these uh, shoe shine kits that's silicone, you know, it doesn't have any, any, uh, any other polish except for clear silicone. And I got on my knees and I went down the row and uh, to every pastor, I looked up and I, I shined their shoes and I looked up and I said, estoy aquí para servirle. I'm here to serve you. And here I am on my knees. I have them on the platform and I'm shining their shoes. The spirit of God fell in that meeting. These pastors started weeping. It was such a a touching move of the spirit. And they got up and testified and they said, we have never seen uh, North America, you know, gringos from America do this. So they all come in and want to be big shots. You've come in here to serve. And that was our heart. We wanted Sweet. to serve. Praise God. A few years later, our pastor who grew from 100 people to 1500 people prospered, got new cars, his and hers, built a new house built new built a new church building, new offices, uh, built himself this huge office suite with an electronic door with a lock on it. He pushes a button, it unlocks, and the door opens, and the door closes. And when I wanted to go see him, he would make me wait out in the waiting area for over an hour while he's on the telephone talking to his buddies about whatever, and then he would finally buzz me in. And I, I finally said, forget this stuff. You know, who is this guy? Uh, a big shot is just a little shot a long way from home. <laughs> I've dealt with people all of my life. And when it comes to ministry, Jesus said, the first shall be last 
and the last shall be first. He said, don't seek to have a title. Don't seek to have a position. Seek to serve one another in love. Let me hear an amen. amen. This is good. Amen. 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 Yes. The Lord. It's, it really is all about attitude, isn't it? And Z Church has the best attitude of any anybody I've ever worked with. Uh, I say true. that all the time because it's true. We don't have problems. We don't have jealousy. We don't have uh, competition. We're a team. We work together. And it's energizing. And, and uh, our team are faithful. Now, let me tell you something. We minister to a lot of people, but it wouldn't happen if we didn't have the Z team. They are the core. They're the heart. Jesus Amen. had 12 disciples. And his 12 disciples were the core of his organization. And he had a big organization. Then he had the 70 disciples. And then he had the 500 disciples. It's a big organization. But he had, he had a central core. And those were the ones that he gave personal instructions to, that he ministered to them privately and personally and poured into their lives. And then they ministered to others and so forth. That's how that works. So I'm so thankful for Z Team because they make it possible for us to reach further and to touch more lives. Father, I want you to bless the Z Team. Amen. Everything yes. they yes. finances, Father. health, favor, uh, whatever they need, I pray that they reap a reward in Jesus' name. I'm going to talk to you about rewards. Amen. Praise the Lord. But first of all, I want to talk to you about mortality. You've heard this, this saying, only what we do for Christ will last. That is absolutely true. And um, what, you, what's, what you're going through right now is temporary. It's not going to last forever. Uh, I want to promise you, um, unless the Lord comes, every one of us are going to die. It's appointed to man wants to die, and after that, to judgment. That's just a fact of life. Uh, everyone dies, but not everyone really lives. And I find that very sad that people are, they have a biological life. They're existing. They're, you know, they're kind of marching in place. And they're here on this earth, and they're breathing the air, but they're not really living. Jesus came to give us life and to give it to us super abundantly. And the key to getting more out of life, I know this firsthand, is serving God. That's when you start living, when you start hey, working man. in the kingdom and blessing the body of Christ and blessing your family and your community. That's when real life takes hold. And that's when real growth takes hold. The more you give, the more you get. It's the law of sowing and reaping, the law of Genesis, the law of multiplication. The reason some people are frustrated, they're like the Dead Sea. Water runs in, but nothing runs out. They're always consuming something, but they're never producing anything. Amen. You got to be a producer, not just a, a consumer. Praise the Lord. Um, you want to be a, a sheep, not just a goat. You want to be a participator, not just a spectator. A lot of folks that think they're doing God a great service just by showing up. You know, they show up to go to church. Oh, you're all blessed because I'm here. Well, thank God you're here. It's lovely that you're here. But uh, there's more to kingdom work than just showing up, more than just turning on the channel and watching something on, on YouTube. There's more to it than that. That's not really laboring in the kingdom. That's enjoying some of the benefits of the kingdom, some of the perks of the kingdom, I'm not complaining about that, but there's more. I'm saying there's more. Well, how do I get more, you ask? The more you give, the more you get, the more you get, the more you have, the more you have, the more you can give, and it's dynamic. It just keeps going that way. Amen. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Whatsoever, whatsoever your hand finds to do, Ecclesiastes 9.10, do it with all your might. Now listen to me. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave where you're going. Let me break it down for you. Whatever your hand finds to do it, do it while you're still alive. When you're dead, it's too late. You know, we're going to be judged for every deed that we do in the body, whether good or evil. There is such a thing as rewards. God has a carrot and a stick. And he says, you know, anything you do for me, you'll get a reward. 
But everything that is not of God is going to be burned. Praise the Lord. And there'll be nothing left. Let me read you that scripture. This is an amazing scripture. I'll kind of read ahead here. And um, yeah, 1 Corinthians 3.15. You've heard this, but it's, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a scary scripture if you think about it. Uh, every man's work shall be made manifest. In other words, every single person on this earth, you're not going to be able to kid about what you did with your life, what you accomplished with your life, what you did with Christ. You can't shuck and jive and, and you know, fool people. You can't fool God. Uh, a lot of people just kind of, they, they talk a good talk, but they don't walk a good walk, if you know what I mean. And I'm not trying to be negative. I'm I'm going to switch gears here in a minute. And you'll see where we're going with this, but this is important. Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it. What day is that? Well, the day of Christ, because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work, every man's work of what sort it is. If a man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, so as by fire. That's not enough. Just being saved isn't enough. There's a crown waiting for you in heaven. There's a throne waiting for you in heaven. There's a reward waiting for you. Don't be like the foolish servant that buried his talents. Uh, do something with your life and, and make your life uh, you know, important, make it worthwhile, uh, give something back to God. There's only one reason why God didn't kill you when he saved you. <laughs> you know, he could have, he could have just saved you and killed you. Say, okay, you're out of the world, you're in heaven, whoopee. But the reason he didn't take you to heaven right then, and the reason he hasn't come back yet is because there's work to be done. And the reason you're here is to yes. do the work of the Lord. That's why you're still on the earth. That's why Amen. you're still breathing the air. And if you're not using your life for Christ in the kingdom, you're not living up to God's purpose for you. He did not save you and equip you just to be a spectator and sit on the sideline. He saved you and equipped you so you can be in the race, so you Hallelujah. can be part of the team, so that you can get things done, so you can Come on. bless Amen. You. Praise God. Lift your hands. Amen. Amen. Pastor. Thank oh, you, Pastor. You. Do something redemptive. Praise God. Life is more than just meat and drink. It's more than just subsistence. Uh, so many things that we think are important just aren't important. I'm not saying that you have to live like a monk in some monastery and not ever have any fun. Of course, you're supposed to have some fun, but that doesn't mean that you do nothing. You, you need to have some balance in your life. You need to tithe part of your time to God. Praise the Lord. We, we uh, talk about tithing uh, money to God. Well, uh, money and time are, are synonymous. They work together. And I believe God needs a few hours out of every day where we serve him, uh, we worship, we pray, uh, we do what our hand finds to do, we minister to one another in love, we get involved in the church. Um, Pastor, um, let me read your scripture. Uh, I don't want to leave some scriptures out because these are these are so good. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 2.10. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus into good work. You got that right. The reason he made us is to do good works. Now, let me say from right now, we're not saved by good works, but we're saved unto good works. I'll explain that. We're created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. So before you were saved, God had a job for you. Before you were saved, he had a ministry for you. And a lot of people don't see themselves as a preacher. They don't see themselves as an apostle. They don't see themselves as a teacher. They don't know where they function in the body of Christ. There's a very good likelihood that you'll find your place in the ministry of helps. Anything that you can do to help the church, 
whether it's being a greeter, parking cars, passing offering plates, serving people at, at the church uh, dinner, whatever it is, working in the, in the back offices, uh, working in the mail room, working in the sound department, working on the video, internet, publishing, whatever your hand finds to do, do it. There's something for everyone in the church. And pastors, let me talk to you. It's the responsibility of leaders to provide opportunities for people to work. If they want to do something for Jesus, then allow them to do something for Jesus. Amen. If people come to me and they say, you know, I, I want to do uh, some videos for Jesus. Yes, amen. I want to do some advertising. Yes, amen. I want to write some blogs. Yes, amen. Praise God. I could probably, I know I could, I could do everything everybody else is doing, but that's not the way I roll. I don't want to do it all. I've done it all at one time or another. I've worked in the nursery. I've changed diapers. I've mowed the lawn. I've painted the church. I've swept the church. I, uh, you know, I've done, you name it. I've done it. Ushering, a youth department, uh, preach when the pastor's away, uh, you know, run prayer meetings. I, ha I cannot think of an area that I haven't been involved in in church. Praise God. Praise but God. just because I can do it doesn't mean that, that I'm going to do it all myself and not allow other people to have the joy of serving God. The Bible says, serve the Lord with gladness. And I found out that when people get a chance to serve God, it makes them happy. And yes. I want people to be happy. That's a, that's a real good feeling when you go to bed at night and, and you know in your heart, that you've done something that was worth doing. Praise the Lord. Maybe a little something, but it has big results. So thank God for every little thing you do for Christ. Anything, anything, anything you do for the Lord, he will do for you. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You can't lose reward, anything and everything. And that means when this fire comes, that what you've done for God is going to remain. You're going to have something to show for it. You're going to have a reward in heaven. And, and I don't know how this works exactly, but some people go to heaven without a reward. They're saved by the skin of their teeth. They smell like smoke. <laughs> you know, a lot of people are going to go are going to go into heaven. Hallelujah, I'm here. Praise God. And others are going to come in looking around. And smoke's going to be coming off of them. And they're going to go, I made it. Ah. <laughs> well, you need to make it in grand and glorious style. Winning every victory, passing every trial by the risen Savior and the power of his grace, you're going to make it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Listen, to it and listen to it and amplify it. This is really cool. We are his workmanship, his own master work, a work of art. And that's true. Created in Christ Jesus. Now listen. Reborn from above. Spiritually transformed, renewed, and ready to be used. I like that. Renewed and ready to be used for good works, which God has prepared for us beforehand. Yes, Praise Lord. God. That's good. God has put something on the inside of you. God has put divine ability on the inside of you. God has given you the mind of Christ. He's given you the anointing of the Holy Ghost. He's given you the word of God. He's given you talents and abilities and insight and wisdom and, and love and faith. And he, he had you born again. He had you recreated. He had you transformed. And now you've got all this power and all this energy. You've got to have a purpose. You have to have an outlet. You have to have something to do with that. It'd be like having this beautiful, uh, what do they call a muscle car, uh, something like that. It just sits in your garage all the time. You never turn it on. You never rev it up. You never get it out on the track and open it up. That'd be a complete waste to invest your money in this beautiful, well-tuned machine and never operate it to its full potential. You are that beautiful machine that God has skillfully made and he's put all these wonderful things inside of you you've got Great talent God. you've got ability you're amazing i don't care if you live in the outbook of back of australia god has given you insight and talent and abilities and everything he's put in you you can use for his kingdom if you're a painter 
paint for his kingdom. If you're a writer, write for his kingdom. If you're a techie, do technology for his kingdom. If you're a gatherer, gather for his kingdom. If you're a teacher, teach for his kingdom. If you got a voice, use your voice for his kingdom. Praise God. Lift your hands right now and thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. I love the ministry of helps. I love to see people work. It, it, my friend Michael Galata is a fellow that uh, started Kingdom Builders, <clears throat> and I had him work with me on a television project. And we hired a TV team and uh, lights and all that stuff. It's a pretty big project, and I, I asked him if he'd be in charge of it. And man, he's a good organizer. He had people coming and going, doing this and doing that, and running all over the place. And he's uh, conducting him, and he looks at me and he said, I love watching people do stuff. <laughs> I do too, especially when they're doing stuff that's worthwhile, when they're doing stuff that's going to touch a life and bless a life. I'm not ashamed to ask people to do things. And if they absolutely can't, I understand. I'm not going to insist if they absolutely can't, but I know a lot of times people just don't want to. You know, God does not bless laziness. Find me a place in the Bible where God has anything good to say about laziness. It's not in there. Amen. Some people are just lazy, Amen. and I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Not Z Team. Z Team works. I, I'm not. I'm not complaining about anyone on Z Team. All I have for them is praise. But I'm talking to some people out there. You don't go to church anymore. Ever since the, the COVID, you couldn't go to church, and you never, you never got back into the church habit. You know that's true, and you think that surfing through the internet and catching five minutes of this preacher and ten minutes of that preacher and this blog and that podcast, you think that's church. That's not church. Church is membership. We're Come members of the body of Christ. It's it's having a relationship. It's related to someone, and you say, "Well, you're online." Yeah, but we have relationships relationship. We work at it. We work at making connections and keeping those connections strong. And we're right here to make a connection with you and to welcome you. You don't have to be the lone ranger out there. You're social. God created you to be part of a family and you need to be part of a family. And we're calling you back. We're calling you back to father's house. We're calling you back. Jesus and the Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit are calling you back. You've been out there on the periphery too long, and you kind of liked it because you don't have to get dressed up, and you don't have to get in your car, and you don't have to go anywhere, and they don't put you under any pressure passing the offering bucket. That pe makes people nervous when the offering bucket goes by. And you don't have to watch people doing ministry of helps things. You can forget about all that, and you can just focus on you. There's something you want to hear. There's something you want to learn, and so you just want to feed yourself, and you don't want to feed others, you don't want to bless others, you don't want to help others, shame on you. I hope you get under conviction right now. I hope after I get through preaching, you're in such conviction that you'll fall on your knees and ask God to forgive you and repent and start doing something for Jesus. Well, there's no place in my Amen. church. Come to Z Church. We've got a place for you. Yes, brothers and sister, we'll put you to work doing something for Jesus. I, I've got a, a, a discipleship group right here who will disciple you, and that's biblical. Praise the Lord. Say, let me hear an amen. Amen. Yes. amen. 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 Lord, you can tell I'm pretty wound up about this. That's all right. See, I'm going to cut out a few things because um, I spent a little more time on some than I did others. So I'll stop. I, I'm close to my first closing. First uh, Corinthians 16. <laughs> <This is> good. <laughs> Thank you for catching that. I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, this is Paul calling somebody by name, uh, that is the fru first fruits of Achaia, and they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. This just wasn't one person, it was the entire household, the entire family. Who knows, it might have been aunts, uncles, cousins, grandkids, they all addicted themselves. I know families like that, I know entire families who live to serve the body of Christ. And that's a beautiful thing when you see it. They addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Now listen to what Paul says. Submit yourselves unto such and to everyone that helps us in labors. Find somebody who's busy and do what they do. 
their anointing will rub off on you. Find somebody who enjoys serving God and their joy will get off on you. You see someone that's doing something in the church, uh, go up to them and say, let me help you. What can I do to help you? Yeah, praise God. There are people who are good examples and we need to celebrate those people like Paul celebrated this household of Stephanus. I knew a couple in San Jose, they're, they're both wealthy. The daughter inherited a fortune from her parents. She was an heiress. And her husband, they're both very young, made a lot of money in, in computers in the early days of Silicon Valley. She was raised with money, tutors, private schools. He went to high school, didn't go to the university, but he had money. And I have to tell you the truth, it kind of went to his head. You know, he, he got to where he was kind of bossy and kind of pushy. Um, that's between him and God, I guess. Maybe he outgrew it. But one day, my friend, who was a pastor, went to see a shut-in, an older woman who was a shut-in. And he noticed this lady's car, the young lady I was talking about. And he said, oh, she's here. And he went inside, and guess what? He found her this rich woman on her hands and knees, scrubbing the kitchen floor with soap and water on her hands and knees. And the pastor looked at her and said, my, I didn't know you were gonna be here today. And she said, yeah. And he said, do you do this a lot? And she said, yeah. And he said, you know, you, you've got all this money. You could just hire a maid service to come and clean up these houses. And she said, pastor, I get a blessing from doing this. <laughs> Man, that makes me wanna cry. That's the servant's heart. Amen. That's the kind of heart God is looking for. Praise God. The way down is the way up. If you want to be great in the kingdom, Jesus said, be servant of all. That's where peace comes. So many people don't have peace because they're frustrated. They're frustrated because they need an outlet. They need to do something. They need to be productive. Yes. They need to bear fruit. Jesus said, it's the Father's desire that you bear much fruit and that your fruit remain. Praise the Lord. We need to do something for Jesus every single day. Praying is doing Amen. something for Jesus. Giving is doing something for Jesus. Gathering people together is doing something for Jesus. Sharing the gospel is doing something for Jesus. Helping someone, feeding someone, clothing someone, helping the church, sweeping the church, uh, singing in the choir. I, there's so many ways to serve God. And most of the Z team, we don't serve God just one way. We switch around and we all do different things. We have people who make videos, people who write blogs, people who sing, people who give the announcements, people who lead in prayer, people who lead the afterglow. And we're constantly trading places and giving everyone a chance to serve in a different area. Praise the Lord and be used of God. We have a place for you. Amen. Amen. Well, it's, it's time to stop Amen. right here, but uh, I, I do want to give you one last scripture. Isaiah 6, 8. I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And then I said, Here I am. Send me. I want to say it to you again. And this would be a good time to turn, off your microphone, turn on your microphone. I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who shall go for us? Here I am. We will. There you yeah. go. You got it. One more time. The answer is, here I am. Send me. Whom shall I send? And who shall go for us? Here I am. Send me. Send me. I can hear the Z team. I can't hear Facebook Live, but you can write it in the comment. Here I am, send me. If you're on YouTube, you can write a comment. Here I am, send me. And if you're ready to do something for Jesus, you can write info at zchurch.life. And we will come back to you and show you how you can get involved in Z Church and start doing something. Yes, we're an online church, but there's things you can do for home. It's, you know, remote work is a big thing today. And we need to be up with the trends. And so we do remote ministry of helps. 
but it's still ministry of helps. It still helps. And so write us info at zchurch.life and we'll find a place for you. Guarantee it. We're going we're gonna to ask you to integrate with us and we'll get to know you and you get to know us with the idea that as soon as possible, we're going to bring you into that circle where you can start working for Jesus. Let me hear an amen, somebody. Amen. 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 All right. Powerful. Good. Hallelujah. Well, it's, it's real and it's real to me. Here I am, Lord, send me. That's all I ever wanted to do was to uh, be used some way by God. That's why I did anything and everything I could. And I didn't know I was going to end up a preacher. I didn't know I was going to end up going around the world and holding mass evangelistic crusades and planting churches and Bible schools. I didn't know that. Just whatever my hand found to do, I did it. I know people who've just served as a deacon, which is a very honorable uh, place in the body of Christ, very important place. But that's where they've served all their Christian days. They don't want more. They don't want less. They don't want to be... uh, you know, take over the church or overthrow the pastor or any of those crazy stuff. They just want to serve and they get better at it and better at it. We've, we've got a wonderful deacon, Steve Chin, just uh, that's his heart. And uh, he just wants to serve and, and he presides over our huddles and over our uh, team meeting and, and everything. That's what he loves to do. We have uh, Elder Bob and Elder Joy, and they were helping me in ministry before there was a Z church. That's right. They just have a heart to give. And uh, we have several people on the team that we've been together for many, many years. Pastor Sharon was our associate pastor, our co-pastor many years ago when we were in uh, Danville, California. And so uh, we have uh, we have these relationships. And then we have people that it's interesting. Uh, it's relatively new relationship, but it feels like we've known one another forever. You know that feeling. And I believe you're going to Praise fit right God. in. You're just, going to, you're just going to slip in and find your, you're going to find home. You're going to find your family. It's safe here. And it is safe. It's a, it's a safe harbor. It, it's a refuge. And um, you're going to, we're, we're politically free. <laughs> There's no bigotry here. There's no weird doctrine here. We're a spirit-filled, Bible-believing church that's baptized in the love of Jesus. And we, we want to reach out to you. Uh, I want everybody on our team uh, to raise your hands. You can unmute yourself if you want to. And we're going to encourage you who are watching by YouTube and Facebook and other platforms that you pray along with me. And we're going to pray that Isaiah prayer. Here I am, Lord, send me. And don't pray it if you don't mean it, because I promise you, when you pray this prayer, you're going to have an opportunity right away. To do something for Jesus. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name for everyone who's watching and listening. And right now I pray that you will receive people into your circle, into your team, into your willing workers, the laborers in the vineyard. And right now, wherever you are, I want you to know that Jesus has a place for you. And I want you to pray this prayer if you'll pray it with me. Sincerely, I want you to pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Father here I am. Here, here I am. am. Send me. Send, Send me. me. I don't want to just look. I want to I do. I don't want to just look. I want to do. I, do. I don't want to be a spectator. I want to be a participator. I don't want to be a spectator. I want to be a participator. I want to do something for you. I want to do something for you. I want a reward when I get to heaven. I want a reward when I get to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, I was preaching with a bunch of pastors one day, and I said, uh, uh, you know, it's easier to get saved than it is to get a position in your church. <laughs> and they said, what? I said, you know, you get saved and Jesus welcome, welcomes you into the family immediately, baptizes you with the Holy Ghost, you know, gives you privilege and status. And uh, some new people come to the church and you make them go through 16 weeks of, <laughs> of uh, orientation before you uh, let them do anything. I said, you need to, you need to get them on the fast track. And uh, 
yeah, you're afraid that they don't know everything and they might do things wrong, but that's all right. That's how all of us were. As children, we had to crawl before we could walk. We had to walk before we could run. And babies make mistakes and they make messes. It's part of life. And if we're going to bring some people into the kingdom and grow them up, we're going to have to, we're going to, have to allow them to make some mistakes. I've made mistakes. You've made mistakes. Others are going to make mistakes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So don't, don't be afraid of, of you know making a mistake or failing. We we all have. We're we're past that. We we'll help you get back up and get make going again. In the future. Yeah, we'll probably make some more mistakes. <laughs> well, guess who gets to receive the tithes and offerings today? I do. Oh. Yeah, and uh, I want to talk to you about the ministry of giving. It's along with the ministry of helps, the ministry of giving, and the ministry of giving helps. Uh, we get things done because people help us financially. And that's another area, you know, singing, the, singing in the choir helps, being an usher helps, working in the audio and video department helps. But let me tell you something, this is an area that everyone can get involved in, is helping financially. There's a rule in the world called the Pareto Principle. I think it's called Pareto Principle. It's the 80-20 rule. And it says that 80% of the work gets done by 10% of the people. 80% of the finances are generated by 10% of the people. And that's pretty much true in church. Uh, it's a, a, very, a small core that does most of the work. And it's a small group of givers who do most of the giving. We need to flip that around. And here's an area where everyone can get involved in the ministry of helps is helping financially. And we're going to pray. And, and you say you want to do something for Jesus. Well, this is your chance to do something. I encourage people to give because I found out that people who give don't complain. People who give work to protect their investment. Uh, the workers and the givers are solid church people. They're pillars in the church. You can be a pillar in the church too. Father, I thank you for everyone who's watching and listening, and all of us can do something in tithes and offerings. If we're watching and listening today, then each and every one of us has an opportunity to give into Z Church, which is part of your kingdom. They can give to the kingdom through Z Church. And everyone who's been listening has an obligation to give something. They who've received spiritual blessings are required by the Bible to give their carnal blessings back. And so we're going to give you an opportunity today to do something. Maybe you've missed some opportunities to give, but we don't want you to miss any opportunities. We're always going to have an opportunity to worship God with our tithes and our offerings. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for everybody today and whether they give two mites like the widow, or if they give a treasure. Both of these types of giving are important. We don't give according to what we don't have. I beg your pardon. We don't give according to what we don't have. We give according to what we do have. And if you can do something today, please do it. And it's not because we're going to go out of business if you don't give. This is about you. A man's harvest in life depends entirely upon what he sows. And you're going to need a harvest down the road. Amen. So plant a seed today. Go to zchurch.life and pull down the giving tab. We're going to have that, uh, that uh, information posted in a little video. So right now, uh, let the Lord talk to you about what you're going to give. And we're going to come right back. And we're going to have communion. And then we're going to have our afterglow. Mm -hmm.